Graham, it's great to see you, man. And it's great to see the band was out, has out, been out there touring. You guys have, if I'm correct, because I've been going on near social media, and one of the last things I saw was it looked like you guys had performed. Yes or no? No, no. We're nope. about to. We're, we're announcing, um, or we did, rather. We're heading out at the end of February. That's right. February uh, 4th, if I'm correct. Beginning of February. See, I'm not yeah. even, I, I even have it straight. Oh, dude, it's been a year. Um, but yes, uh, yeah, it's imminent. It's imminent. We're getting ready. We're, we're planning our uh, rehearsals for uh, January and um, going to jam. It's been a minute, though. We had our tour. This is the tour that's been booked and canceled twice. Wow. Because of COVID, yeah. of course. Of course, yeah. Yeah. What has that done to you guys, man, for the last two years? Because I saw some stuff where you guys had toured England. Um, you guys, basically, man, you were just doing what you guys usually do. COVID mm -hmm. hits. How devastating was it for you guys? Well, it did take a lot of the wind out of the sails. I mean, I'm not, you know, I mean, I, I know it hit a lot of, it had everybody, it hit everybody, and especially with, in bands and stuff, you know, I know a lot of people that, that made records and wanted to put records out and tour them and stuff like that. So, you know, we weren't unique in our position, but it definitely like for a band of, we love it on the road. We thrive on the road. We thrive with our live show. That's, I think that's like yeah. the best place to see us. And, uh, and so that, yeah, we couldn't, we weren't able to be in our, uh, in our, in our zone. And then, you know, we worked on songs and, and um, COVID, you know, we like to be in the studio together. We like to work on music together and we couldn't really do that either. So that was also a, a bit of a thing uh, we had to overcome is uh, just being separate from one another so yeah it was a, it was a, definitely an adjustment period so what did you guys end up doing then did you like write songs did you guys record if so how tough is it to record during covid because i've talked to a lot of people i knew what the rules were sometimes depending of course where you were and where you were living yes. sometimes yeah. you're allowed to be in studio sometimes you're not sometimes you're allowed one or two people in the studio sometimes only one person sometimes you can bring whoever the hell you want how yeah. tough was that? And also, was some of the recordings done at home? Yep, it was done all mostly at home. Um, we're all, I mean, yeah, we 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 did it uh, remotely. So we 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 all live in uh, different cities, so we couldn't get together. We couldn't even get together in the studio together. So what um, what we did is we just sort of, in order to be productive, we we just shared ideas online, and just did a you know like the, a folder of uh, ideas and, and shared session files back and forth and just contributed that way. Um, you know, Brian and I are fortunate. We, ha we both have um, like studios in our homes and I have a home studio here where I can just come and work on music in my house. And that's, it was very fortunate to have that at our disposal. And we did like our drummer, he's in Ohio right now. And he would find, a, he recorded some drums. The drums on Airport Dreams were recorded with his iPhone. And he was just uploading like iPhone loops. And it was like, that sounds cool. And we just put that in. And our bass player, um, him and I did one session um, uh, like through, uh, what's it called? Audio movers or something. So yeah. like, like through the internet and then and just made that work. I mean, we've always been a resourceful band where that we're kind of make do with the tools that we have at our disposal and and uh, and and have fun making music that way. So we kind of rose to that the occasion. But definitely, we lost out on the um, you know being in the same room and and making electronic music organically and and together. That kind of that we couldn't do that, but we still made made the best of the situation for sure. Now, how long have you guys been together for? um 2004 is kind of the first ish things so it's been a minute it's been a while yeah and the reason why i ask that is because what is it like because i want people to understand this what is it like for a touring band a band that's used to living out of a suitcase hotel rooms uh not even waking up in the middle of the night not knowing where the hell you are um you know just just the the life on the road and then suddenly you're not doing that. And it's not even like you decided, okay, so you had time to wind down for it. Literally, breaks are hit. You can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. What is like mentally and emotionally 
for somebody like yourself to go yeah. through something like that, knowing that you've been used to for more than a decade in traveling. Yeah. Well, um, you know, it, yeah, it was, it is a huge adjustment. It, it made me, uh, it embraced the thing that I learned on tour, which is you can't control everything. <laughs> and the only thing you can control is like, and I, this is a big thing. Like, uh, of course, over this, this period of time is just, just be, to be creative. That was the main thing. It's like this. The only thing I can be control can have control over is just making stuff and 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 making music. So that's kind of really what what at least for speaking personally, I leaned into is just okay. There's time I can't go out and 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 be on stage and perform live, um, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna make stuff. And that's all. And and even when you do make stuff, you, you never know what's gonna happen with it. You don't know where it's gonna go, but. You just make stuff and things will happen. So that's kind of what I really, really leaned into was just do do stuff, make stuff. And opportunities came along. It was good. I'm just curious, though, because I've asked this uh, same question to some people. Um, was it weird sleeping in your own bed day after day after day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I got used to it. I'm I'm in I'm in the zone. Well, you know, I have a 10 year old daughter and and uh we kind of like we got into our routine here which is pretty which has been pretty good my wife works she's an artist and we we both work from home so we'd meet up uh in the mornings have our coffee and then she would go into her painting studio and paint i would come into the music studio and write and we kind of settled into our our uh our zones it was good i don't know i don't think we're sick of each other yet and we're you because we have been living the tour lifestyle you know where i go away and she has she's done with me for a bit and doesn't have to put up with my shit. <laughs> but you know, the other thing that, um, again, a lot of artists have gone through is they've told me that the way they write now is different from the way they wrote before COVID, meaning, of course, their thought patterns, their emotions, their stories. Was that the same yeah. thing for you and the band? Well, I mean, for us, we I think the nature of um, immediately, like just how we put these songs together, like doing it in a different way. Um, you know, I don't know if we'll go back to working this way. Who knows how we'll go moving forward? But we, I mean, just technically speaking, I think it opened some creative doors for us, just yeah. to, just by the sheer way of making music. And then also, you know, um, just that like forced. Uh, rest time i think we had because we had all, you know like i i booked all this time off to go on tour all that got canceled so it was like free time to just figure things out and it was another one of those discovery periods where it's just like I, I'm, I'm gonna make stuff i'm gonna experiment i got all this free time i'm gonna do things um for no purpose i think that was another nothing that changed you know like when you're in the band and you've got the cycle going you get make a record we make it together we go on tour we come back we make a record now it's like you don't have time to deconstruct that and build it back up again and i think there may have been at least for me too like a bit of deconstructing of that like how i and like think about sound and and you can kind of like take some time to fuck around a bit more what's the one thing that you've personally learned about the, what would something that you learned to do that you did not know anything about before, whether, and it doesn't have to be about music. It could be around okay. the house. If you learn how to cook something, you learn how to build something that you would yeah. never have done unless COVID and you were locked in the house. Yeah. Okay. You want to know? Oh yeah. Well, so I, I really, before um, COVID, I, 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 I love sewing. So I, I, I've been like doing that. And then uh, again, free time lockdown, I, I learned how to make pants. <laughs> are you serious so, yeah yeah yeah. so i'm not like it's it's i'm i'm not like I, it's i i can make them for myself i'm not like good enough that i would like tailor a bunch for somebody else but i that was like i i never dabbled in sewing and i now have like a, a few projects but that was one i like sat down i'm like okay i'm gonna figure this out i'm gonna like learn uh watch videos and stuff and i and i kind of got it i kind of figured it out so that was uh, that was a good one, and it's nice to like make like I make music, and it's you know it's like it, it exists in the ether. It's just like in, 
online and on a vinyl record but like when you're sewing something you're holding on to it it's like a tangible thing so it's kind of cool to make something in that regard but yeah that was what I, that was my deal <laughs> i love it man but you guys make yeah. great music too and <laughs> uh one of the big singles lost cool which mm. honestly my friend if somebody told me this was by holy fuck i would have been what are you kidding me this is to me a different sound man yeah. Where, what's the original the origins of holy fuck i should say mm. the the origins of lost cool where did this song come from well, it basically, I mean, again, it started off like, okay, we're going to try and make shit and um, where do you start? We always start from a little seed of an idea, you know, it'll be a loop or a, like a, a drum drum loop from a drum machine or something. And so, I mean, really, it's just kind of messing around with keyboard lines and, and I, you know, and I, and I think like it basically just started with that main synth loop and just messing about in the basement here and and i think it i think i liked it it sounded like it was something off of an old like french synth wave yeah. compilation or something like that and and uh and then i found like playing with it i had it on loop you could kind of like layer tons of fun stuff over top of it and it was really fun and this this loop kind of anchored every anchored the song and and kind of held it together so i don't know i was like well what a better what better of an idea to upload than that like it just like people can go to town on it and you can we could like do whatever you want send it back and we'll edit it together so i mean it's kind of that was sort of the, the the vibe of just like here's a thing that people can the, the guys can take and we can just kind of run with it and see what happens and then that's sort of what, what happened and then um um you know there, there's always been talk about us getting other uh, singers on board and guest vocalists and stuff like that so we really leaned into that too with these these ideas that we had and and uh, reached out um to a bunch of singers on different songs and Luci we sent lucia uh who sang on that track this she she picked that one to, to add her vocals to as well so she did that from uh, her studio first yeah. you're going to be sampled the hell out of <laughs> because uh I, i'm just listening to this and i i could hear i could hear uh hip-hop artists going after that easy oh good thanks uh, yeah. but the other thing what i loved about it especially with the video all i kept thinking to myself was i could see a massive screen people at a dance club massive mm -hmm. screen that song going and the the way the waves are almost like and i'm gonna say the word wrong as i i'm stumbling all over the place some liminal messages being yep. said through those those waves i think it's the oh, yeah. coolest thing it's like it's it's like that song and that video it's its own show oh awesome thanks yeah i mean that was the sort of interesting thing with this doing this uh, maybe a bit of a what, what the the circumstances of, of our creation creativity how it changed it did make these sort of unique little these two songs are very unique i, I still think they sound like our band but they're they they do feel different and uh, like we couldn't make them the way we might prefer to make them, but we're proud of them. I'm proud of them. I like how they came together. They they came together much differently. Yeah. Yeah. So what's gonna happen, man? Is there gonna be more songs, EP, album? What's going on with all this? Well, we're. I mean, mostly we're. I think we're taking things one step at a time, gearing up for these shows, um, mostly. And I know when we get back out on the road, a lot of creativity will happen a lot of energy will between the four of us will come back and 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 we'll we'll be writing a lot that way too we, we we write a lot on like sound checks and stuff like that and little jam arounds and so um that's kind of the next thing just really getting getting ready for these shows make sure we're, we have our things together and can put on a good show for the spring so that's the next step yeah guys we already said the tour is happening in february so you're home for the holidays what's mm -hmm. going to happen with you over the holidays man uh we'll see i don't know man <laughs> everything i'm just i feel like every plan is flying by the seat of your pants um i uh yeah maybe there'll be some family time uh for sure and then yeah just i think i'm gonna try and um uh just be again still be as creative as possible there's some things i want to work on and and do before we leave because i know when when we start touring again that time will be spent on the road so yeah just no just no creative. Now the question I have to ask because I got to be respectful of everybody's religions and stuff. Uh, do you celebrate Christmas? We do in our own way, yeah. In yeah. your own way, but I mean, growing mm -hmm. up, did you? Yep. Okay, so yep. my question then would be: as a child, what would you say would have been your favorite Christmas gift, and why? Oh man, 
Um, I'm gonna have to think about this one for a minute. Uh, sheesh, I don't. Oh boy, I'm I'm a, I have a really bad memory too. What was my favorite Christmas gift of all time? I don't know. I think I got G.I. Joe action figures or like a Star Wars uh, thing that I really liked. I, I don't know. There was nothing I got that was that was uh, really, uh, really super profound. Wow. <laughs> now, when you say G.I. Joe's, you would have been talking about those. I think it was what the six inch G.I. Joe's, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You see me, I would say massive fan of mm-hmm. G.I. Joe. But because I'm a lot older, I go from yeah. the... You know, G.I. Joe with the beard and the Kung Fu grip and all that other <laughs> yeah. stuff. So that yeah. was my favorite. In fact, I had a G.I. Joe talking commander where you pulled the string and he would say oh, nice. different commands. And I swear, I wish I had that. So you saying G.I. Joe, I'm good with that. You're on but the if, Okay, cool. Yeah. But if you also said Star Wars, brother, do you not wish you still had those? <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I have my nephew. I think has some of the old GI Joe. He inherited it all that, the Jeep or whatever that I had, and and then yeah, I don't know what happened to the Star Wars stuff. I think I, I'm thankful my parents hung on to my my uh, hockey card collection though. They, I still have that because that could have been a real bad thing. Oh, you're so lucky because I was just talking to somebody else a few hours ago, and we I asked everybody the same question. He said about how his uh, hockey collection was thrown away, and he literally said he had like a thousand <sighs> hockey cards. And we're talking the old school, the gum in the package, and everything else too. Yeah. Oh boy, because they're going, they're they're worth stuff again now. <laughs> they're they're like valuable. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. If I could go back in that uh, hot tub time machine, there's certain things I would have grabbed mm-hmm. and held on to because I'd I'd be buying homes right now with my oh, yeah, toys. Oh yeah, totally. Stuff. No okay. kidding. So we got the tour happening. We, uh, you know, looking at hopefully new music happening too. As we wrap this up going into 2022, probably the most important question. A lot Mm -hmm. of people are, you know, when 2019, with all this stuff happened, they're all like, get to 2020, please. Yeah. We got to 2020. They were like, get to 2021 quick. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're doing kind of like the same thing. Well, the ball dropped so we can get to 2022. People kind of still feel that as soon as a new year hits, the world and everything changes. From your experience, what can you? What advice can you give for folks who are still thinking that way? Because what I've noticed in the last couple of years, the waves are still hitting the uh, hitting the sand. I know. Well, and we always we we write our chapters by the the calendar year for some reason. It's I don't know if it's this ingrained thing for somehow the new year we're gonna just like make all these changes, and that's valid. I, I obviously you know whatever is gonna be the catalyst to, to to if you need to if you need that change that year change to to make your changes in your life. But uh, I don't know. Like the, 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 I've talked to I talked to my friend Hannah today about this like. Um, and because she wants to really like, you know, and we both want to uh, step up our game as musicians and do do uh, great things. And I, I, I don't know, like, not don't wait around for the year, just do it. That's <laughs> my answer. And just been and again, like the, the lesson I was saying before, like, you can't control everything, you can't control how, what's going to happen with the world. You can't control how your success is going to come to you. You can't control who's going to react to your music how they're going to react to the music the only thing you can control is just doing it and making it and make as much as you can work as hard at it and just do do it just do it (laughs) i I love i love that man that that's definitely a t-shirt i love what you just said look brother congratulations on the music and the new single congrats the fact that uh, you guys are back on tour where you deserve to be Thanks. Looking forward to everything you guys are doing in 2022. Enjoy the holidays and cross fingers next year, man. Hopefully we can do this one-on-one. Yeah, same, same here, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. 